more than halfway. In fact, just have a, two or three more messages. We've been talking about putting on the armor of God. Putting on the armor of God that Paul has challenged us to do. And by putting on this armor, we're able to fight against the, the evil, the principalities of this world, and to stand firm. You'll find the armor of God in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. And to just remind us where we've been and where we're going this week, let us look at that. Ephesians 6, and I'm going to begin reading with the 13th verse. Paul says this, Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is the Word of God to us today. Well, this week, we are going to talk about the helmet of salvation. Uh, as Chris prayed, school starts tomorrow. Uh, for all of our surrounding counties and city, everybody's going back early. <clears throat> Many students are heading to college soon. I can look around and see a couple here that are heading back to college some for the first time like Ethan and Rachel's heading back to Wake Forest and I know there's others in our congregation that are going back well also what's starting in college high school and professionally if you haven't noticed is football <clears throat> football's back now many of y'all are excited about that you're uh, getting ready watching the boring, dull preseason of the NFL, but getting ready for your favorite high school or college team. And um, some of you here just don't care, and that's okay. But whether you don't care or whether you're getting pumped about football, one thing I've learned is that players come and go. Players change on high school teams because they graduate, college because they graduate, you know, the professional football league, the NFL, there's so much free agency and trading and new people that come along. I can't keep up with the entire roster. But one thing stays the same with all of our favorite teams, don't they? We can identify our teams because I think today we root for that helmet more than we do who the players are on that team, right? We're rooting for, you're going to root for Virginia Tech or Virginia or Wake Forest or Clemson or Alabama or Auburn or the Packers or the Bears because of that helmet. It doesn't matter who's playing. They can come and go. My most uh, uh, player I just dislike the most, if he comes to my team, he's a hero because he's going to wear the helmet of my team. I don't know everybody that's on the Redskins team. That's my team, and but I'll root for the helmet. And every Sunday, no matter who's playing that year, I uh, just admit they're going to lose. But I, I root for the helmet, and you are too. You know, Paul says, as believers... We are asked to put on the helmet of salvation. Salvation is what gives us identity, isn't it? It's, uh, well, how, well, we're going to talk about this for a few minutes, how everybody else is going to recognize who we are. For the Roman soldier, the last piece of armor he put on right before uh, they begin to march in the battle line 
or they mounted the horse and rode in the cavalry in the battle, the last piece was to put on that heavy, hot <laughs> helmet. But they needed that helmet because it would protect them. We are asked to put on that helmet of salvation. And one thing I would say in our day and time, I know Paul, I think, is thinking the same way, is that, first of all, I hope that the last piece of spiritual armor you put on when you leave your home is the helmet of salvation. The last piece that you think about when you leave to face your day is the helmet of salvation. That you prayerfully put that on because that one, that is such a lovely thought. It is such a lovely a memory and something to take with us, a thought for the day before you begin, is to symbolically in prayer say, I'm putting on the helmet of salvation today. I'm going to carry with me the first thought out my door, the thought that I am saved and that I am loved by Jesus Christ. Isn't that a great way to start our day? Now, we can have a lot of thoughts going with us by the time we grab our keys and rush out the door for the morning, can't we? My last thought going out of the house might be the news I just watched. Yuck. You know? My last thought might be the to-do list I have to do today. My last thought might be... Um, <clears throat> the project, the paper, the homework I haven't yet done yet, and I'm heading to school. My last thought it might be what faces me when I get to the office, when I get on the job. Might be the doctor's office I'm going to this day and what I've got to face. We can have a lot of last thoughts, can't we? Paul says in the spiritual armor, why not before you head out the door, your last thought be spiritually, God loves me, and Jesus died for me, and I go out, and no matter what else is going on today, I'm saved. I have salvation. Salvation is a positive thought to carry around all day long. I love the hymns and the songs that we sang today. They reminded us of the joy of why we come to church, of why we gather with other believers today, to remind ourselves and, and to be joyful that we have salvation, that Jesus has saved us of our sins, that we have our eternal home that we're going to, and nothing can change that all day. We sang, we have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And we sang only trust him. And then we, we went through the gospel message. And as, as we sang, uh, you know, that, that beautiful re redo of that great hymn, Glorious Day. Living, he loved me, and dying, he saved me. Rising, he justified and carried my sins far away. That's the thoughts we need to leave the house with, isn't it? Wouldn't our day be better? Wouldn't we be put in, put it in perspective? You know, there is a lasting joy when we finally discover the kingdom of heaven that Jesus talked about. There is a lasting joy and inspiration when we have discovered salvation for our souls. Jesus told a, a couple of little tiny parables about how that joy should feel and how it should last and all that we should do to hold on to it. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, verse 44 through 46, Two little parables. First, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, 
when a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. That's the joy of salvation, isn't it? We know it's worth everything. We're willing to give up all. It's more valuable than what we own. And, and once we realize how much Jesus loves us and that we can put on that assurance of the helmet of salvation, it's like a precious pearl or gem. It's like a treasure we found hidden in the field. And we sell everything to go back and buy that field so we can hold on to it. So the first thing I'd say about putting on the helmet of salvation is put it on your head every day. Go out with that positive outlook. The second thing about the helmet of salvation in this battle against spiritual warfare is that the helmet of salvation reminds us that we are eternally protected from any power, from any evil, or from the evil one, anyone that wants or tries or attempts to take Jesus Christ from us. Jesus cannot be taken from us. Salvation cannot be taken from us. Your eternal home can never be taken from you. No matter how much you fall, no matter how much you sin, even after you're saved, God will forgive you. No matter if somebody says, oh, I'm going to take that away from you, you believe in Jesus, let me show you this. Helmet of Salvation reminds us that it cannot be taken. One of my favorite chapters in Scripture, and a lot of people's favorite, is the 8th chapter of Romans. I encourage you to read it often. It's always a great chapter. But I love the way that Paul wraps up this chapter of the promise of salvation. Let me read some of that to you, beginning with verse 31. Thinking about that the helmet of salvation says nobody can take Jesus away from you. Paul says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also among with him, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's assurance, isn't it? That's the helmet of salvation. No matter, as a Christian, no matter what other team uh, comes up against us, we've already won the Super Bowl. It's done. No one. On Wednesday nights, we're going through Revelation and the end times, and I told them up front, I can, you know, we're going we're to learn what's going to happen uh, as the end draws near, but I can give this whole study in 
10 seconds, God wins in the end. God wins in the end. That's really all we need to know. That's the helmet of salvation. So in light of this, learn to walk through life with an eternal perspective. It's easy to get wrapped up in the minute details of our daily lives, isn't it? I'm going through a time of suffering. I'm going through a hard time at work. I'm going through a difficult relationship. Things aren't going well with my health. Or things just are making me despondent and sad. Yes, those were tough times. We all walked through those valleys. But just remember, put on through prayer the helmet of salvation, which reminds us we really are citizens of heaven. We need to take an eternal perspective in life. In the end, we win. Because God wins. It's hard to do that, I know, but that's why we have to put on this protective helmet in prayer. And remember to obey God rather than men or women. Many men, many women might try to tell you the best way, what the best way of life is, what to do with your life, or that this is right and this is wrong or only this is right and only this is wrong. Measure everything up against the salvation that's found in Jesus Christ. And in the end, if your conscience is torn, only obey God, not any man, not any woman. You know, again, back to the football teams. I love to watch... uh, especially on those gray, rainy, muddy games. <laughs> Towards the end of the game, I know those guys are worn out, tired. They're covered with mud. Uh, they're breathing hard on the sideline. They're on one knee, many of them. Got the helmet down on the ground, just waiting. But at some point in a critical part of the game, the coach may yell, defense, get ready. And how do they get ready? They spring up before they hit the field. They put on that helmet. They buckle up that chin strap, and they run out, and they get on defense. Paul says when you put on the armor of God, sometimes you're running out on that field, defensing against Satan and the evil powers and influences or just the bad stuff that's going on in your life. And sometimes uh, there's two minutes left, and the coach yells, offense, get ready. And they get up, and they put on those helmets, and they buckle the chin strap, and they hit the field offensively to win the game. And sometimes the Lord says, buckle up your chin strap. Go out on offense against this world, against your own demons against your own doubt and put on that helmet of salvation which can encourage you and remind you that the eternal battle has been won. So as Christians, we need to get ready to face our day. We need to get ready to face a problem. We need to get ready to face a challenge. We need to get ready to work and carry out a command from God. And as we put on all the armor, we need to put on the helmet of salvation. We need to buckle up our spiritual chin straps. And we need to hit the mission field for God. Put on the armor of God. And remember, the helmet is the positive piece we put on. The one that tells us that because of Jesus, we have the victory and we won the battle. Let's go out and claim it for him. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, uh, thank you for salvation. That is forever, that it never goes away. Lord, that we'll be in heaven with you one day. Lord, we have some battles to fight for you until that day. We have to 
claim the victory we have to share the good news we have to overcome some obstacles but you go with us and as david slew the giant you through your spirit will slay those in front of us go with us in jesus name amen